In a previous video, we explored some of the brilliant features in the EZ EV charging system. But today, we're going to go a little bit further. We're going to actually install one and commission it. So what have you got set up for us, Gary? We've got one cable from our distribution board that feeds out to our three EV charging points. But just remind me, how many EZ EV charging points can I have on one cable supplied, say, from a 32 amp three-phase breaker? We could have 101 units. Thankfully, you're not asking me to make off 101 EV charging points. However, I've already set about doing the end point, but I've got two more still to install. We're going to look in the next part of the video at those key features about installing an easy EV charging point. So Gary, what have you found in the installation kit? So I've got the base plate and then I've got the bits with our screws and sealing plugs in it. So let's open those out. So I've got a couple of sealing plugs there and we'll look at those in the installation, as well as a padlock, which we'll come back to. And then here, there's a little bit of different thinking here, Gordon. So when I look at the screws here for the actual um, clamps to hold the cable in place, it's got a different yeah, head on yeah, it for so me. Yeah, this so this is a Torx 25 uh, screw. So quite a common type of uh, screw head, but not something we're usually used to seeing in electrical equipment. And you've, you've got a special bit for that? Yes, in order to get those tight for my cord grips, I'm obviously going to have to have access to one of those. And it continues on when we're looking at the terminations. The terminations don't have a screw head, they have a number four hex. So we've got to be very careful, we've got to get it back to the required torque settings. But we had one of these in our toolkit, didn't we Gordon? We did, and that caught us out in the initial stages of the video, because we thought we could just put this in our regular torque screwdriver, but it doesn't fit, so we had to buy uh, a specific bit for the, the ones we have. So not a lot of people may have the hex bit in the in the torque screwdriver kit. And that's in order to get the terminations back to the required torque settings. And we'll show that when we're looking at the installation. I've got two points behind me in which I need to install. I'm gonna to cut to footage now of that. And then perhaps you can come back in and ask me a few questions in a few moments, Gordon. <laughs> well, Gary made that look easy as you torque those up to the five Newton meters required in the instructions. But how did you find the rest of the installation? Lonely would be a word. Yeah, you swoop in at the end, no doubt, to do the commission and take all the glory. I did the full install on my own. Well, I've had to learn the intricacies of the system and we'll come back to that later. But do you want to talk us through what you've done with the installation? Yeah, I used a tough sheath cable. Now, I know on camera it probably looks like a steel wire arm, but it isn't. It's surface clip from the distribution board and loops in and out of the three EV charging points that we've put in. Okay, so the cable entries themselves, they don't look like cable glands. No, they're sealing plugs, okay? So there's no glands involved, okay? So it's, it's like a grommet almost, okay? It's just a case of carefully cutting off the top of it and then pushing it into position in order to seal the top. Okay, so this is, a, this is IP34, as we mentioned in that previous video. We did. So water can get in and escape. Check out that video for more discussion about that, but you'll also notice the back of the unit slopes away, so any water will naturally head towards the back of the unit and away from the charger. I see you've blanked some of the unused wares in that unit, Gary. Yeah, so I've blanked one in the top that wasn't used and the bottom entry one here. However, I can see on the pedestal, you've actually used the bottom entry. Yeah, so this is the pedestal that you'd probably use if it was in an open area car park or you couldn't mount to a wall. Uh, the cable entry here, yes, comes from beneath. If I wanted to loop in and loop out using this system, where would I make my connections? Okay, so easy of thought of that as well. There's this, this door in the bottom of the column here where you would do those loop in, loop out connections. So you've put the cord grips on there, Gary? I have, yeah. So we're coming in and we're going out. We've secured the cable to the cord grips. Remembering the actual ceiling plugs at the top are not securing the cable. So it's vitally important you get those cord grips back in, Gordon. So I see you've ferrelled the ends of the conductors, Gary. Yeah, I had a choice. The terminations themselves are designed to take a dual ferrule. So I had a twin ferrule here, and off camera, I'd stripped back two conductors, and I just tried the two to see which one I was most comfortable with, and I went with the ferrelled ends, and I was really pleased with it. I've gone protective earth, neutral, L1, L2, and L3, as I'm looping in my three-phase neutral and protective conductor, and then onto the next EV charger. Can I use it on single phase, Gordon? Yes, yeah, so this charger is three phase or will work off single phase, in which case you'd only use the first three terminals there. Um, I notice in there, Gary, it's, it's labelled up as IT and TN, but I don't see any earth rods here. We know that's a big issue when it comes to EV chargers. How have you managed to deal with that? Yeah, I've got one supply cable coming out feeding all the EV charging points, which is really nice because I've therefore used only one MATI as our protection for our broken pen conductor, and that's back at the mains end. So I've had all the fun of installing the wiring system for these easy EV charging points. It's down to you now, Gordon, to commission it. Okay, well, I'll let you finish your wiring first, Gary. You just plug that unit in. The bases are already powered up to go. And there we go, so we'll see the, uh, there we go, the, the, the lightsaber's just lit up. Very nice, yeah, I like that. So, okay, so we can see it's powered up. 
Power you up. see you've got your phone in your hand. Uh, this is a special commissioning device, Gary. Yes, it's a smartphone, and I've got my instructions here as well. Really, is that it? That's it. Three stages. So we're just waiting this to do its own self-check. Okay. We're waiting for a yellow LED. There it is. Okay, that was quick. So first stage, press and hold this button for five seconds. And we're expecting to see a green lightsaber. We had the green light same there. Okay, very good, very impressive. So what does that mean now we're doing? Okay, so now this unit here is sharing its own wireless network. So it's created its own wireless network and we're now gonna join it. All right, so you pick that up on your phone, just going into settings and finding it. Just going into settings now. Okay, that seems really easy. No app? Uh, no, no need to download an app. Okay, I think I've got the short straw here doing the install, even though I thoroughly enjoyed that. It doesn't seem many stages to this, according to the little slip. I, I had to understand the technicalities of it, Gary, and the technicalities were there's not many of them. <laughs> okay, so now so I'll open up a browser on my smartphone. Okay, so you're searching the internet, yes. Yeah, and uh, we're not searching the internet. All I need to do is enter the IP address of the unit here, which is on here, which is okay. 192.168.1. Dot one. one. Okay. Into that. Ah, there we go. Straight away. I'm in. That was quick. Choose the language. I'd suggest we want English. Okay. Uh, but you can choose Norwegian if you wish. Okay. I've got to put in the PIN number from the front of the unit, which you'll okay. find here on that sticker here. Yeah, so it's 3646, that PIN number. 3646. Log in. It's a new installation we have here. We haven't got any other charges. Select new installation. You go. Please enter the missing installation data. So this one already knows we're here. Right. Wow, it's even giving me a reading of the voltage on the various lines of the uh, <laughs> of the power supply to the unit. So what I have to do first is choose the main fuse coming into the building, okay. the power rating of that. So that was three phase, 100 amps. Yep, so I'll just dial down that, 100, 100 amps. amps. And then I'll also choose the current rating of the fuse feeding this circuit. So this circuit was fused at 32 amps. Doesn't seem by any stages to this, Gordon. And then just choose the circuit number. Okay, so that's the distribution board yeah. circuit number. Yeah, so okay. We'll call it number one. The electrician name. Should this be me or should this be you? <laughs> uh, I'll put me in there. Oh, so, dear. of course you will. So will uh, take all the credit for this. I'll put that in there. And phone number. Uh, do you want to connect to the local Wi-Fi network? Now you could, that's another option. This has its own inbuilt connection to the 4G network. Right. Uh, I'm not going to do that. So if you connect it to the local network, does that mean it will download all those updates a little bit maybe faster or etc.? Yeah, a little bit faster it says, but you, that's not a requirement. You don't have to do that. Okay. So now I'm being asked, will I have to commission more charges? Okay, so we've definitely got two more. Got two more, so I'll answer yes to that question. Okay, so here's the clever bit. Now if I ask you Gary to Disconnect that unit, unplug it. Okay, so I'm taking the charging berry out. Taking the charging berry out, and let's shuffle along to our other charger in the network. So if you plug that into there. Okay, we're so back we're into this one. We're waiting for a slightly different light. Oh no, where we go? The power up doing its self-check. The lightsaber's back. And this is configuring the back plate, isn't it? Yes. Yes, yeah, configuring the back plate. So it's gone green now. Please don't tell me that's it done. Uh, that's it. Yeah. So now if you unplug that again. Oh, so that is now configured. Yes. That's configured. Okay. Check that one out. And that's moved back to our last charger in our installation. Okay. And it's going to do exactly the same again. And you're going to tell me that those are now configured. Hmm. I think I might have got the short straw by doing the installation, even though, like I said, it was not a difficult one. This is simplistic itself. So it's flashing away, it's going to drop down, and you're going to tell me the back plate again is configured. There you go. That's it. So I take this one out again, or can I leave that it there? Uh, well, we're going to leave this as a blank unit. Okay, so I take that one back out. So take that, yeah. Does it matter where this one goes? I'd put it back in the first one. Oh, back in the first one, okay. Yeah. So, and we're going to do with this sticker here is it viable okay to so it's it recommend that the sticker goes in either the instruction manual yes or possibly in the fuse board i'd suggest the fuse board for us is a more sensible option because we're more likely to lose the instruction okay so we keep that pin number yes so do i now find a different charging berry so, so bring us another charging berry oh it's getting technical he's realized they're actually called charging berries sometimes so i just plugged that do i do nothing now because the the actual back plate is configured it's configured so we'll see this will go into a standby mode. That should end up lighting up as a, as a white LED. And we're going to put a blank plate on the last one, yes? Yeah. So again, this, the clever bit is we've already configured that back plate. 
Should, in the future, you want to add an additional charger, all you have to do is remove the blank plate, plug in the charge berry, job done. So that means that this one won't have a charging point on, it'll have the blanking plate we've discussed previously. Yeah. This one will be used as an EV charger and so will this one. Yeah. And they will share the 32 amps across, in this case only two EV charging points, but we could have put anything up to 101, 10, 20, 30, etc. So all we need to do now is choose the colour of our covers. Wow, they look fantastic. We've used all the ones we had, so we've got the white one, the red one and the black one. Remember there's more colours in the range, but there's one thing you're also thinking, what happened to those padlocks, Gordon, we saw earlier on in the video? Okay, they're tucked underneath the cover, locking the charge berry in place. Okay, you've put the covers back for us off camera. How are they secured into place? Okay, simply click into place and then they're secured with a screw that sits underneath a rubber flap at the bottom of the charger. Also like what you've done, you've put this handy little bracket here. What's the thinking behind that? That's there if you want to leave your lead permanently attached, which you can lock in via the app. It just keeps it nice and tidy. It does. I think easy is a really good word to describe what we've done with this EV charging system. I thought it was easy to install and watching you do the commissioning, I think it was phenomenally easy. Yeah, but behind that, actually Gary, sits enormous power in the back office suite to help people manage multiple charge points. And perhaps we'll look at that in another video. We're always interested in your comments, so please make sure you leave them below about an EV installation that you've carried out, or maybe you've experienced working with the easy EV charging points. We'd be interested in your thoughts.